Good day, unlike good friends. Today is Human Rights Day. On this day in 1948, the United Nations issued the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is based on the idea that all human beings are born free and equal, and that everyone has the right to life, liberty, and personal security, as well as the right to freedom of speech expression, thought, and conscience, and the right to be free from torture. Taiwan appears to be democratic and rule of law, but there have been numerous human rights violations in recent years. Taiji Men is regarded as an indicator case of human rights violation. Despite the fact that the court ruled in 2007 that Tai Chi Men was not guilty and therefore not subjected to taxation. The National Taxation Bureau ignored the court's ruling and joined forces with the Administrative Enforcement Agency to forcibly auction off Tai Chi Men's land. On August 21st of last year, my whole family went to the site to protest against the illegal auction. Witnessing the situation, I was also disappointed and sad, beside being angry. Taiwan is a democratic rule of law country, and the court has already ruled in favor of the people. They should not auction off the people's property forcibly. Moreover, the control yen has designated the, the Tai Chi Men case as a major human rights protection case. Next, let's use this video to bring you the truth about the Tai Chi Men case. Can you force auctions, each unlawful tax bills, just for job performance? Face the people! Revoke them in five days! Not guilty! No tax evasion! In July 2007, the Supreme Court found Tai Chi Men not guilty and no tax evasion. I can hardly breathe! Stop the execution! In 2009, the defendants received national compensation for wrongful detention. Illegal execution! The Tai Chi Men tax case originated from the criminal prosecution. The tax bills should be revoked as per not guilty ruling from the criminal court. The Tai Chi Minh tax case is a fabricated case. Since its founding in 1966, Tai Chi has been tax exempt. Why was it taxed for the six years? That was a result of Prosecutor Quan Ren Ho's unlawful prosecution. The National Taxation Bureau issued tax bills based on the prosecutor's illegal indictment without conducting any investigation. So tax bills were issued for the six years listed in the indictment. However, both the Supreme Court and Supreme Administrative Court ruled in favor of Tai Chi Men, stating that Tai Chi Men is not a cram school and that red envelopes from Diji to their Shifu were gifts, not tuition. Therefore, Tai Chi Men is tax exempt. The criminal court made a final not guilty decision. That is, their indictment was totally untrue. That is, they failed to put forth evidence. Tax bills issued without any evidence to justify them of course are invalid. They should automatically resolve the case. However, all of the illegal tax bills for the six years based on the false indictment have not been revoked. The Xinzhu branch of the Administrative Enforcement Agency will enforce auctions against Tai Chi Men's property in the Miaoli Mountain area on July 31st. How can you execute an incorrect judgment? It's like you clearly know a person is wrongly convicted and sentenced to death, and yet you still proceed to execute the person. It's wrong if the government does nothing to correct the mistake. Even more wrong if the government proceeds to execute the person. We still want to emphasize that Tai Chi Men indeed is not a cram school. In 1997, the Ministry of Education stated that Tai Chi Men is not a cram school. In 2010, during a public hearing, the Ministry of Education again clarified that Tai Chi Men indeed is not a cram school. In 2007, the Supreme Court confirmed Tai Chi Men was not guilty of tax evasion. 
In its re-examination decisions in 2012 and 2013, the Ministry of Finance also admitted Taijiman is not a cram school. In fact, in 2018, the Supreme Administrative Court ruled in favor of Taijiman again, stating that Taijiman is a manpai of qigong, martial arts, and self-cultivation, not a cram school. As a result, the National Taxation Bureau corrected the tax amount to zero for 1991 and 1993 to 1996, except for the year 1992. Taijiman was still taxed as a cram school for 1992 on the ground that a final decision on the case was made in 2006. However, the Supreme Court didn't make a decision on the Taijiman criminal case until 2007. How could the administrative court make a decision, an incorrect one, before that? They made a wrong finding of fact. They treated Taijiman as a cram school and taxed Taijiman as one. Since the finding of fact was made on the wrong basis, the laws applied were also wrong, and the court ruling was also incorrect. Corrupt officials, lock them up! There is another major violation of due process in the 1992 tax case, contributing to Taijiman's losing the case. The case was handled by the same judge, Zhu Lin Huang, in the first and second trials, and even in the request for a retrial. This violated recusal doctrine. Judge Xu Lin Huang was assigned the Taijiman case in Taichung High Administrative Court and proceed to conduct investigations. Afterwards, she moved out to the Supreme Administrative Court and heard the Taijiman case. Taijiman should at least had the opportunity to request her recusal. Was it impossible to make such a request? Totally impossible. Why? Because the Supreme Court and the Supreme Administrative Court don't hold court hearings. It was a written secret trial. So the case was handled by the same group of judges, running around in circles. Recusal is required for relief procedures. How could it be fair when the same judge handled the case in two levels of courts? Tell me, how could it be fair? Besides violating recusal doctrine, seriously violating Taijiman's litigation rights, the National Taxation Bureau was even suspected of concealing evidence during the administrative hearing process. That's outrageous! They sent survey forms to Taijiman deeds they randomly picked and asked them about the nature of red envelopes. They collected 206 survey forms, all of them stated the red envelopes were gifts. However, the NTB of Taipei determined only 9 of them were gifts. The NTB of Central Area recognized only 5 were gifts. Later, when the control yuan investigated the case, the NTB of Taipei stated all were tuition fees. That's outrageous! These all say gifts. Gifts in nature. The others all say gifts too. The National Taxation Bureau's lie about the case was exposed on June 17, 2010. At the public hearing in the Legislative Yuan, Taijiman Dizhi showed their survey forms testifying all of the red envelopes were gifts, debunking the false claim of the Ministry of Finance and the National Taxation Bureau. And now everyone is here, and all the information and evidence is here. It's spread out all over the floor, and you clearly know that you are in the wrong. What you've said in the past is questionable. But you want to continue to make the same mistake? That's bad. We request that the Ministry of Finance conclude this case in two months. Exactly what to do, and what are you going to do? Don't delay anymore. Let the NTB of the Central Area submit the report to the Ministry of Finance. It's the NTB of the Central Area. It's not good to let them take full responsibilities. Just report to the Ministry. This is all I will say. Okay, we'll do as the Deputy Minister says. We'll send our official report to the Ministry of Finance. Just now we said to dismiss, to revoke. Revoke it? Okay, the Taxation Bureau of the Central Area will report to the Ministry of Finance. One month later, the Ministry of Finance sent letters to legislator Chou Jingtian, Xing Zhe Tu, and Justin Chow, saying it had demanded the National Taxation Bureau of the Central Area to revoke the execution pursuant to Article 40 of the Tax Collection Act. Four days later, the National Taxation Bureau of the Central Area in turn sent a letter to the Xinju branch of the Administrative Enforcement Agency requesting it to stop the execution pursuant to Clause 3 of Article 9 of the Administrative enforcement law. Yet, as of today, the Xinju branch still hasn't stopped the execution. Obviously, there are significant problems with the tax bills. Why are they so reluctant to stop the enforcement? Is there any secret behind this? Why are these illegitimate tax bills issued again and again? 
Why haven't they been revoked? One of the most important reasons, as we mentioned, could be the so-called bonus that tax officers receive for collecting taxes. In 2011, I told the finance minister that this case should be closed. But he didn't attempt to resolve the matter the way he would with his own business. After all, he already got his bonus, and the tax is imposed on someone else anyway. On March 15, 2019, they announced a list of recommended reward recipients. That was for the Taichuan tax case. March 5, 2020. That was in 2019. Now it's 2020. Every year, they talk about how to split the money. They still remember it one year later. Performance bonus will be split in two. Each gets a half. You are my eyes. You are my eyes. You are my eyes. All of you are my eyes. Why? Go check it out to see if there's anyone evading taxes. There is a reward up to 4.8 million Taiwanese dollars. Another 10 years have passed since the Ministry of Finance and the National Taxation Bureau publicly promised to resolve the Taijiman case within two months. Revolt them immediately! Taijiman has been persecuted by the authorities through unlawful taxation for 24 years. The Supreme Court found Taijiman not guilty of tax evasion or violation of tax codes. The defendants received national compensation for unlawful imprisonment. The Taijiman case was listed by the Control Yuan as a landmark case of human rights violations. But ironically, Taijiman's land was illegally auctioned by the enforcement agency on the eve of the establishment of the National Human Rights Commission under the Control Yuan on August 1st. While the Thai administration claims to uphold human rights, promote transitional justice, and implement judicial reform, will it truly have the courage to end this ongoing false and unjust case spanning four presidencies? Will the government return justice to Taiji Men, or will it let this ridiculous farce full of officials breaking the law and covering up for one another tarnish Taiwan's human rights protection and make Taiwan an international Laughing stock. Revoke illegal auction. The Taijiman case has also attracted the attention of international experts and scholars. Next, we welcome Mr. Thierry Valley, president of CAPLC. During these years, we have been able to appreciate the international importance of the UN and what can be achieved with the UN bodies in the defense of human rights. Over the past four years at the UN, with the help of the organization present here at this conference today, we have repeatedly denounced the discrimination against minorities around the world. We have brought to the attention of the UN the discrimination of religious minorities in China, such as those suffered by the Uyghurs, the member of Falun Gong, and more particularly the dramatic case of the member of the Church of the Almighty God. Session after session of the Human Rights Council, we organized conferences, made written and oral statements, we held meetings with the state delegation, during which the victims were able to make their voice heard. In June 2021, we brought to attention to the UN Human Rights Council the case of the Taiji men and the injustice they suffer in Taiwan. At this Human Rights Council, we denounced how the tax weapon was used to arm Taiji men. In this statement, we enlightened and denounced the unscrupulous means used by the Taiwanese government in its attempt to destroy the Taiji men movement. The use of tax weapons against spiritual minorities is unfortunately common practices in many countries, including France, which finally, after a struggle to denounce this injustice practice, was condemned by the European Court of Human Rights. In September, at the 88th Human Rights Council session, we renew our appeal for Taiji Men. This time, we enlightened the confiscation of this Taiji Men place of worship by the Taiwanese government. This is another form of discri discrimination, just as serious because a spiritual community cannot exist without a place of worship. Today, 
the situation of the Taiji men can no longer be ignored in the world and the Taiwanese government must allow the Taiji men to enjoy their property, their place of worship, and to make their contribution to world peace without worry. The UN mechanisms allow civil society to, particip to participate in the improvement of our society, and it is important to continue to speak out against the unfair treatment of Taiji men by the Taiwanese government. In 2009, Taiwan ratified the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights ICCPR, and the Inter International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. The ICCPR guarantees fundamental rights for every citizen as well as freedom of religion or belief. The signing of the International Covenant is of a paramount importance, but there is still a step to be taken to implement and respect the commitments made when the covenant was ratified. The model proposed by the United Nations is a balance between these institutions, the member state and civil society. In these three components that ensure that the fundamental purposes established in 1945 by the Charter remain at the heart of the United Nations. Taiwan, like all other states, must find this balance with civil society and grow with it, not against it. It is, in fact, the struggle of the Taiji men that we support so that justice is done to them, so that their contribution to a better, peaceful and harmonious Taiwanese society is recognized. Thank you for your attention. Last September 19th, a group of volunteers holding signs on the roadside were surrounded by 20 police officers who abused their authority and detained a female volunteer or for six hours before releasing her in the early morning. She passed out later as a result of excessive shock and a long period of no food and was taken to the doctor. She was hospitalized for several days after being diag diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. Next. Let's go over the entire story of Mother Huang's case. Pio 我們平常人看到你們這麼多人集結在一起然後所以因為這樣就我要現在盤查你的身份
可以拿我去攀加谁，谁录我就攀加谁。有什么好修正的？我们了解一下而已嘛。叫他举牌，带带举牌手过来。举牌手，我们没有强暴胁迫，你没办法举牌啊、哦。我们就请这个所长签名一下案子。好，谢谢。侦查不公开，好不好？侦查不公开不方便，好不好？侦查不公没有，现在是告诉告发，还没进入侦查阶段。我们从现在开始就已经逮捕他，那就可以开始进入侦查程序了。刑事诉讼法二二八条，侦查开始是检察官，警察只是告诉告发，警察协助检察官侦查犯罪，好不好？就这样子。拜托，你检察官还没开始好吗？你现在还是告诉告发，你现在还没侦查开始，你现在是调查阶段。分案啊。还调查阶段，刑事诉讼法二百二十八条、二百二十九条、二百三十条，所以警察是二二九、二三零，必须二二八条，检察官一告诉告发开始侦查，侦查开始，所以现在没有侦查不开始的时候，现在是警察的调查阶段，告诉跟告发的阶段。对不对，首长？你说对不对？首长，你送人过来应该有基本的要件要符合，对不对？对啊、那你你是说他当场有人在那边恐吓他吗？他恐吓他说了什么恐吓的话，可不可以告诉大家一下？人不在场不公开，侦查不公开，好不好？恐吓是他现在重新要开始做笔录，好不好？因为就是为了等你们陈教授，他刚刚已经问到最后一句话了，然后为了配合你们作秀，然后整个侦查就停下来。也不成立呀、啊，也不能够三百零二条送给检察官征信，这没有必要啊，对不对？这没有，这又不是重大犯罪，又不是杀人罪，又不是当场殴打或怎么样。案件举牌而已，好吗？这个有现行犯吗？有送地检署的必要吗？你就检察官再另外开传传票再问就好了。就让人家出来嘛，对不对？他脑袋装的是威权，不断的扩权。今天你们怎么可以扩到这种地步？那我们警察先生，怎么可以两个首长这样讲出的东西是颠三倒四？警察是没有权利接通一通电话就把人家扣了呢？你要看什么？看文件呢、啊？告诉状啊？没有告诉状是不告不理的嘞。你们不能够没有告诉状，没有收走证就把人家收证啊？说这个东西证据叫做无效呢，不能承担公证呢。刚刚我在里面就是中华民国，他们他们说没有签名也没关系，就直接把我妈妈带走，而且他叫我走正门出来骗我，然后把我妈妈从侧门就带走，麻烦你们离开了。他们就说直接带去地检署，然后没有签名也没关系。为什么把你带走？六十几岁的妈妈这样子，你一定要给他签名吗？你为什么让他让把他把人带走？为什么把人带走？六十几岁的老人家这样子。下去下去下去！今天在直播面前已经见证了，警察没有在保护人民的权利，不断的用暴力。所以，我们如果遇到不守法的人，不不保护百姓，我们不用浪费时间。所以，我们现在全部到地检署，只要有问题的，一定追到你。今天我们请求值班的内勤检察官检察官出来。按铃啊铃哦！哎呦，我现在头头脑一团乱哎，就感觉一堆警察围着我，我就觉得好害怕、哦。你把人弄成要紧急送医，然后你把人这么小的案件，你竟然滥用职权这样搞，滥用职权对不对？全世界，全台湾。从来没有因为一个举牌，因为所谓的妨碍民意罪的问题，三百一十条，然后你就可以滥用警察权力。你这样警察国家，你怎么可以这样搞呢？
Taiwan's emphasis on human rights still has a lot of room for improvement. In Taiwan, which is proud of its democracy and the rule of law, a small number of police and officials continue to violate the law and oppress the people through abuse of power. The government should prioritize human rights and return victims justice as soon as possible. Although I am only a high school student and cannot implement the reform on my own, I am willing to stand up today and contribute my effort to speak out for these persecuted Taiwanese people because I know participating in these reform activities can improve Taiwan's human rights situation. The road to reform necessitates the unification of the entire populace in order to supervise the governance of the government. On this, on this Human Rights Day, I hope that the government will listen to the voice of the people, stop persecuting them and immediately vindicate wrongdoings and false cases so that Taiwan will improve as a result of our efforts. Thank you very much.